Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome to a brand new game. This is Life in Bunker. So, um, I happened to see this on another channel. I, uh, it was on Petard's channel, and I found him through Fallout videos. And he played this game, and so I, I thought it looked interesting, so I uh, reached out to the developer, and they sent me a, uh, a code for it. So, uh, we're going to check it out, and we're going to see how we like it. And uh, and yeah, this is, this is um, kind of like a cross between... I'd say Dungeon Keeper and because it has that same sort of um, setup uh, visually but it's more like um, RimWorld but then we're, we're in an underground bunker after a comet has hit the earth and rendered the surface unlivable and we have to survive for 50 cycles because then after 50 cycles the door will open and uh, our people can leave and they'll be able to live back on the surface so that's the goal which is the equivalent of 500 years, so each cycle is 10 years. Um, so we gotta survive for 500 years. So you start the game with this sort of basic um, uh, setup right here, which has the very bare necessities. So we got here um, air purifiers, big ones, small ones, storage containers. We start out with some building materials, about a thousand of them. We got a water pump. We've got a waste container, it's where you put the garbage. We've got uh, the incubator, um, <laughs> which allows us to grow children, uh, because people will grow old and die in this game. And we have this cool little mini reactor. This kind of reminds me of the game Endless, um, Dungeon of the Endless, where everything was powered by like a yellow diamond shaped thing. But anyway, uh, and we've got like a little fridge to store our food. You need a separate fridge for each food type, which is kind of strange. Um, but anyway, we've got, it's got this sort of uh, polygonal art style, which I think is nice. It's fine. Um, what I really like about it is that you can tell what everything is really quickly. So let's get into this game. Uh, let's start playing. So we can obviously, we've paused the game at the moment so that we don't go through our time. So what I want to do is take a look at what we got in our area. So I started a large world because the small one was like really small, at least when I was doing the tutorial. Um, so over here we've got these um, resource deposits, ore deposits. They got 216 in that one, 217, 218, and then there's also these ones that I think are, are, are some more. There's a rift. Uh, this one allows us to build an elevator, or as it calls it, a lift. Uh, you know, which is uh, European parlance, uh, down to a lower level. There's multiple Z levels in this game. Uh, and we can actually look at these lower levels, although we can't actually do anything on them. Um, and there's, uh, I think, yeah, we can only go down through four of them at the moment. Uh, but when you, as, as, the lower you go, the tougher the rock gets, and you need upgrades in order to to get through it. So anyway, let's get let's get started here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to build a place for our people to sleep. There's currently um, no no kind of um, bedroom in this uh, this base. So um, where we're we gonna put that? How about over? Uh, well, we can't mine this uh, super hard rock, so let's not put it over there. Um, we'll we'll go put it over here. So I can select the destroy uh, button. And we can um, basically select and draw out where we want to um, delete the blocks. So we'll go about that size, but we need to go one larger so we can place the walls. Um, you can't actually, and let's make this room a square. You can't actually place the walls um, unless you have a, uh, a little gap. That's how it works. Yeah, so the walls will go here, and we'll have two uh, two blocks, and then we'll have um, a one block, and then we'll have two blocks, which is exactly what we need. Um, now, it's highlighted everything in white, so before they actually do it, we have to click this button here to confirm. If you don't confirm... Oh, that was loud. Um, let me adjust the audio settings. It felt uh, good before, but 
now it doesn't. Alright. I still haven't gotten these audio settings 100% where I want them yet. Oh, no. See, nobody's doing anything. Um, nobody's actually doing the job because I forgot. I have to click this button. And it's kind of like Dwarf Fortress. I have to assign people uh, jo uh, tasks, jobs. You know, Dwarf Fortress, Rim World, all those games have that kind of thing. So we've got our people with their randomly generated names. And we can rename them if we wanted to. We can click this button to focus in on them. And all their skills are randomly generated. So the first thing we need to do is make some people workers. And there are a couple people here who can only be workers or janitors. So we're obviously going to start with them. So let's give ourselves, I don't know, three workers. And then we're also going to need a janitor. So we'll make one janitor. We're going to want an engineer. So we'll make this guy an engineer. Because he, he's the one that repairs stuff and, and maintains things. Um, we're going to need a scientist later on. These are our basically work as medics as well as researchers. But we don't need one right now. And then there's farmers. And we don't have that yet. So because of that... Let's just make these guys whatever they can do that we need, uh, possibly need at the moment. Um, like another worker, perhaps. And later we'll give them the actual jobs we're going to give them. But at this point in time, there's, they, there's no farming to be done or anything like that. And we're going to start growing ourselves some people. It's, kinda, it's slightly creepy. Um, I don't really care too much about it but yeah, the, the people are growing are grown in this uh, tank right here at the end so get going dudes see they go over there and they drill out the uh, the wall and then you get to see what's in the area and luckily there, there doesn't appear to be any um, solid un unminable rock here at, at top speed they go pretty quick kind of wish that they could go a little faster but whatever so we're going to put some floors in, and we're going to use, um, well, we're going to use red floors. Do it like that. And now we need to put the walls in. Actually, not there. That's where the walls go. There we go. So now you guys can build up the walls. Get rid of that. Turn the speed down. Well, pause it. And then uh, we'll put down a different, some more floor. Um, what, what's this floor over here? I think that's the metal floor. And there's really no point in put it, putting it here. Except to make it kind of look cool. Because there's metal floor going through those rooms. Um, so, I like things to look cool. It's going to take some building materials. Which is probably a waste. But we're going to do it anyway. Because I'm silly like this. Now, we need to put a door in here. And, and the only way to do that, unfortunately, right now is to destroy the two walls because you need a three block space to place the door it, it would be nice oh earthquake oh yeah that, that, that was an empty tile right there with no floor so it, it created a, it caused an earthquake we're gonna put a door there so that's gonna fix that problem so we'll go to doors and lifts and we'll place a single door you can hit the right mouse button to rotate stuff um, now we're gonna go to residential because this is our bedroom we can't place bunk beds yet. We have to research them for some reason. <laughs> so we're going to place single beds. I'm going to make sure that the head of the bed is against the wall just because I, I want it to be against the wall. And we're going to play we're going to start here at the back of the room and we're going to get ourselves six beds. Once we get um, bunk beds researched, then we'll replace these with bunk beds and we'll have 12 beds. Um, so we'll start up time and let them go ahead and do that. All right, there they go. Oh, yeah. That's a, all the doors are automatic except when the power is out and they have to manually open them. So, so there is power in the base, but there's no power here to the door. Um, so we have to get power. They've got these two buttons up here: water grid layer and power grid layer. And this is where the game reminds me of Prison Architect, uh, because you have these water pipes and electrical wires at a different layer. Um, that doesn't impede anything else. So if we go to infrastructure tab, we can go to electricity and water and we can stick some power cables. You see these little uh, square holes. That's the, where you can uh, put the power into. And we're going to just drag two wires right there to put power into that door. Um, at the same time, 
It's a little dark in this room, so we're going to put some light lights in here. I like these floor lamps, so we're going to use two of these to light up this room. I think that should be all that we need. Um, these other rooms are, are using only one light uh, in, in each. So that room's big. This room is, this, I think, the same size or similar size to this room, and they've used two lamps. So we'll go ahead and use two lamps. But that means we have to connect them with power. So when we select the power cable, it will automatically select us the uh, proper... Um, layer and if we drag it like that that should do us because once that gets built it'll it'll connect so let's turn up uh, the speed on, on the time and, and let them go ahead and build these things there we go there's one lamp and there's the other lamp so there we go now we have a bedroom with beds and it restores uh, Plus 100% of their um, sleepiness when in use. I will admit, I don't understand some of these uh, UI elements at the moment. I, I, you can turn off a bed, apparently. Alright, so we need to set ourselves up with some food. We've got 40 vegetables at the moment. Uh, we need to get ourselves some food, the ability for them to eat the food. Um, we need to get uh, some ore uh, going, like uh, we need to get over here to this ore deposit. Um, let's, and we need to make some bathrooms, because uh, they definitely need that. So let's do bathrooms first. Where is our water system? So the water is coming over here, because it, the uh, incubator needs water. So we can put our bathrooms right here, off of the, um, off of the bedroom very easily. Because uh, we have access to... Oh, I keep pushing the wrong buttons. Because we have access to the water quite easily. So um, we're going to want to put a couple of these things in. So if we click here and go to um, residential. The shower pod is, is, is two blocks. Um, whereas the toilet cabin is one block. And um, I don't know how many of these we need for our, uh, our people. In the tutorial they had you build two of each. So in order to do, to do that we would need two, four, six, seven um, blocks. Of, uh, of, of area inside the inside the oh, stupid phone I toss the away um, okay so let's uh, figure out and plan out our room so this is uh, um, this will be a three by three room if we leave it here we can't go any further to the right because we can't mine this uh, hard rock um, so a three by three room is, is would, would not be enough um, actually it would be but it wouldn't leave much room in, in make the room really tiny so let's just go ahead and and, and uh, make it as long as as this um, as this room here Although that'd be that'd be pretty large but that gives us room for uh, expansion in the future um, to expand the bathroom uh, make it larger okay so where are we gonna put the door um, if I had put these beds in a slightly different place or, or this light it wasn't here I can put it there I can still put a door here but they have to walk across the, the light so I think we're gonna put the door right there in the corner uh, it won't mess with anything up because uh, the ends of it act as a wall. So, all right, let's. Um, no. Ugh, let's get time going. So, the UI elements up at the top of the screen. If you didn't notice, uh, over here at the residence, we currently have ten people, and the number, the three in the brackets, is representing our um, our embryos that are growing. And the creepy thing about the uh, the incubator is you can actually see them inside. So some people might like, find that a little weird. <laughs> All right, okay, they're done. Um, let's get the walls and the floors going up. Now, <coughs> okay, I'm sorry about that. <coughs> the weird thing I've noticed. One thing I've noticed about this. I'm seeing stars is that the people are not the brightest tools in the shed and if you're not careful they will wa uh, get walled in uh, to little caverns and stuff and little holes and that's obviously uh, not a good thing now we want to go to here and we want to go to floors um, so we're going to put blue floors in the bathroom because obviously I think that makes the most sense some nice blue floors um, then we're going to place our door right there and then 
once they get the floors in, we can place the uh, the actual um, things. Okay, so they got those. So let's go ahead and it's under residential. Place the shower pods. Um, where's the door on these things? Like which? Okay, it's got a little arrow showing you which side the the door is on. So the side that we have to make easily accessible. That's nice. I like that. So we'll place a two of those there, and then we'll place uh, the toilet cabins um, up here. There's not much room for expansion in the future, I'll be honest. I thought the room would be a little uh, larger. Uh, it's because we put the door over here. Now we could still technically put some shower pods and stuff on this side of the room, though, so that's fine. Uh, we're going to place our uh, initial toilets um, up here. And the reason I want all these connected is because they actually pass water between themselves themselves. So if we go to the water grid and we grab ourselves some water pipe, all we have to do, because uh, machines will connect the water between themselves, is drag some water pipe right there from the embryo, uh, from the incubator over here, and it will, um, no that's the wrong button, and it will work properly. It'll do what we want. It'll pass the water through the incubator into the first shower terminal, and then that shower terminal, because it's touching each of the other ones, is passing the water between them. Um, that's another cool thing that this game did, that I like, the UI, is that all the machines have uh, light indicators on them. Uh, these lights are on because the water is uh, being supplied. So you don't, you can tell at a glance which machines are functioning properly and which ones aren't. Like this uh, mini reactor, we're currently using 60% of its power output. But you don't have to click on it to find that out. You can actually just look at the little bar there. And I, I quite like that. So we need some power for the door. Um, so let's give the door some power. It should only take one power cable. Yeah. Um, in fact, all we have to do is just place the power cable right there. So they'll do that. Someone will do that. Okay. And now we need a lamp because it's dark in there. Grab a floor lamp. And we're gonna put the floor lamp, um, I think, right here. We'll able to put uh, two more showers over here if we need it later, or another shower and some more toilets. Um, but we want to leave a space here for people to walk in. That's just my thought process. We probably don't need to. Probably just need to have one block of, of space for them to go, and it'll work fine. But uh, you know me, I always want to make things look nice, even if it's a little. Uh, Overcomplicated. So we're going to put the power cable right there. Power cables aren't even on the same level as water cables. And we appear to... No! It's the wrong button. We appear to be able to click... Uh, to place them on the same tile as each other. Now, there is one thing that this game tells you. You can only have one water pump and one mini reactor per grid. So if, if I use all the power out of this mini reactor... I could not then place another one and just tie it into the grid. That can cause outages. Rather, I would need to separate part uh, part of the base from this, just cut a power line, and then use the second reactor to power the stuff over there. Get it? <coughs> Good. There we go. We got bathrooms. And I like the way our base is coming along. We can't cut anymore over here because we need to research uh, that. We need to get over here to this um, ore, though. So let's go ahead and uh, our next de demolition target um, will be in this direction. Uh, we're gonna need we're gonna make a room here at some point, but I don't know what we're gonna do there yet. So let's not do that. Let's just go ahead and um, well, you know what? No, we're gonna knock this out. Um, we're gonna cut a room. Uh, get rid of that. There's apparently no block there. Uh, we're gonna cut this room out. We're gonna hit yes. And let's uh, get them on that. And maybe we'll put our like ore processing stuff in this room. Or we'll put something in this room. I don't know what. But um, we need we'll, we need some big rooms. We'll save the oh. Yeah, it's a good thing we have janitors. They use like space vacuum cleaners. Futurize. Ah, oh, darn it! There's a, a hunk of rock we can't mine. Um, unfortunately. So we'll just put our walls where we can put our walls. Fortunately, we can't put a wall right there, which might be problematic. Um, ex except we won't put a wall 
uh, here because we will dig in that direction. I'll dig over here because we want to get into this area with the ore, the ore thing. So let's go ahead and let them do that, and then we will place the flooring. We're just going to use standard blue floor, um, or maybe red floor. It doesn't matter what floor we use. Well, it does. Um, certain thing. Oh, the babies are done. We got some kids running around. People are happy about that. There are certain types of uh, machines that can only be built on certain types of floor. Uh, the first one of which is going to be our ore processing stuff. They they can't be built. They can only be built on reinforced concrete floors because uh, they're heavy. I would imagine is the reason. Um, so they're going to build that. They're going to dig over here. Oh, we just missed that that bit of heavy, uh, of, of hard rock. Reminds me of, um, slightly of Rock Raiders, the fact that they can't mine hard rock at the beginning. Alright. And we are on, uh, we've spent one cycle in our bunker and we're about to finish the second one. Remember, each cycle represents ten years. Um, I don't know, if, I think, yeah, see, this person's old. Children and elderly residents cannot be assigned a profession. So her age is three, which represents her, um, you know, child is one, adult is two, and elder is three. And, once, and only during the adult phase can they actually be assigned a job. So if we check this out, um, there's going to be some people that we can't assign a profession to. Wayne Curie. That's a weird name. We can't give her a profession because she's too old. All right, so we got that. We got a path to the ore thing. So let's go ahead and build it. It's under um, production. It's um, this mining machine. So we'll place the mining machine where it goes. It requires some power. So we are going to have to run all, uh, power all the way over here. Um, so we'll let them build the thing first. Oh, earthquake. Uh, and actually only one little pile of rubble got placed. Oh, no, two piles of rubble. People don't actually get hurt in the earthquakes, it just leaves rubble. And you need a janitor to clean it up before you can do so, before you can uh, build there. Alright, come on. There we go. So we got our ore extractor, mining machine, whatever. It doesn't have any, uh, any actual power. So we will go to infrastructure, go to electricity and water, go to power cables. And it's a long power cable, but we are going to run... Oh no, we can't. We can't put it there because we we can run it inside walls, but we can't run it inside the rock, obviously. Um, so we're gonna run it down this way, and we're just gonna uh, plug it into this door. There we go, and we'll tell them to go ahead and do that. Get back here, and uh, we need a way to process that ore. So if we go to production, we need the refinery. We can't place it. The refinery is two by three. And it needs to be placed on concrete. Um, and so we'll replace some of this floor um, with the reinforced concrete floor. But first we have to demolish the existing floor. And we'll just do that one right there. And get them going. Get them doing it. Now, I'm not 100%. I don't know if we need to be making children at all times or not. Um... The tutorial kind of told me that you want to always be producing uh, new new children. Um, I think that each cycle, the adult... I don't know if each cycle the adults get get older or not. Uh, genetic engineering allows you to create new generations of residents. Let's just go ahead and start them up again. And um, well, we'll see if we're doing the right thing later. Alright, so... Okay, they, they've broken the floor up, so let's put our... My dad is outside. A little ladder. Um, put down this concrete floor. Okay. Now we can put down the refinery. See? Now let's just put it there. So, we get that going. Someone's building it. He's standing inside of it while he's building it. Apparently that doesn't matter. Oh, wait. What's this? What's happened? 
Oh, a mole man has... Someone cut his foot, and he stepped on a nail. And a mole man just dug up a hole. We, the mole man can make holes and invade your bunker. The janitors fill the holes up. Alright. Okay, so that's the importance of putting down floors. Because the mole man can't uh, dig in, uh, through floors, I, I don't believe. Maybe they, maybe they can. <coughs> I haven't seen him do it. So let's just put some... Uh, floors in this place. We're gonna dig this out a bit more and we're gonna make it a bit more um, proper in the future. Um, so we've got our ore processor. It needs power, so as we usually do, put some power cable right there. Always remember to hit uh, the confirm button or they won't do it. The janitor cleaned up the dead mole man. So now we can put a floor there if we'd like, which I would. So now we have our, our refinery that will process our ore into building materials. And one ore produces five building materials, and it's currently producing. It produces pretty quick. Okay, so we got that. <coughs> uh, what else do we need? Well, we're going to need a kitchen and an, a dining area for our, our residents. However, I think that what I really need to build as well a resting zone. Ha, a sofa. VR game machines, exercise. I think these things uh, these things increase morale or something. I'm not sure what they do, actually. We're going to need some vegetable patches um, to grow vegetables. There's also fruit bushes, fish aquariums, and grain patches. Um, the vegetables are the first one that we have access to. Um, there's storage containers, fridges for food, storage containers, and then waste containers for waste. Where, okay, so under life support we have a mini reactor, uh, we also have a power switchboard, I'm not sure how you, how you, how you, what that does. I mean, I'm pretty sure it, you put power in once you turn it on and off. Water pumps, water switchboards, air purifiers. Um, my question here is the lift. Where is, where do I go to find the um, research station? There it is. It's under residential for some reason. So we're going to want a research station. Why don't we put it right here? Uh, so once somebody builds it, we'll make someone a scientist. Oh, I also want a light in here because it's dark. It'd be dark. Dark, 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 dark. Let me check the electric grid. See if there's a place I can put it where I don't have to make another power line. Well, no, I, I want it over in the corner here. So let's place a power line. Just right here. All right. We have a research lab. We have no scientists. So we need to assign one. We have two people that can be scientists. Um, age four. Oh, I, I don't know what that age actually means now. If this person was, is age zero but was already a... Wait, that's a child. Um, where is it? We have an elder. I'm pretty sure we have one elder. This one. And this, these ones look different. I have no idea. I think those are women. I don't know how it works. Okay, so we need to assign somebody to be a, a scientist. We're going to assign this person to be a scientist. Uh, that makes sense to me. Why don't we assign both of these people to be scientists? They're not doing anything else. Um, there we go. We can't... There's a child there. and uh, This person is... not happy. Uh -huh. um, oh, there we go. I think this is the person that, that hurt themselves. We don't have an infirmary. Um, so we can't treat the illness right now. But anyway, that's it for this. This person is, is doing research, uh, gathering research points, which we can then spend. So anyway, um, let me know what you think. I think Life in Bunker is pretty neat. I like the aesthetic it's got going on. It makes it easy to see what uh, everything is. 
I, I like the polygonal style. It's, it's, it's cool. It reminds me of the original Alone in the Dark. So uh, I'll probably make a couple more videos about this, and then, uh, and then we'll see from there whether you guys want to see more of it or not. So anyway, this has been Life in Bunker. I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.